Jupiter's moon Europa is covered in a thick layer of ice, but underneath it is a vast ocean of water, measuring up to 100 miles deep. Water ice was previously thought to be rare and only common on Earth. But it can, in fact, be found all over the solar system, even on Mercury and the Moon. Saturn is less dense than water, so if it were thrown into a giant pool, it would float. Space isn't supposed to be black. There are stars everywhere. Shouldn't they light up everything around? You don't see stars wherever you look because some of them haven't existed long enough for their light to reach Earth. There are eight confirmed planets in the solar system. But evidence shows there can be a ninth. We just haven't discovered it yet. Organic matter could have been brought to Earth by comets, since it has been found on several of them. Saturn also has a never-ending storm, just like Jupiter, but it's also peculiar for its shape. It has six distinct sides. Mercury and Venus are the only planets in the solar system that have no known moons. Jupiter has 79 known moons orbiting it, the largest of which is Ganymede, and it's bigger than Mercury. It was thought that the Milky Way was a belt before, but now we know it's a spiral galaxy. Footprints on the Moon can't disappear because there's no wind to blow them off the surface. There's a theoretical possibility of a white hole, the reverse of a black hole. Nothing can enter it from outside, but light and matter can escape from within it. Although there are trillions of stars in space, we can only see a tiny fraction of them in the sky. Charon, Pluto's moon, is half the size of its planet, which is why Pluto orbits a bit around a spot outside its own axis. All the objects in space, including planets, interstellar dust, and whole galaxies comprise just about 4% of the universe. The rest is dark matter and dark energy that can't be seen and isn't fully understood. In the star system of 55 Cancri, there are five planets, four of which are gas giants, similar to Jupiter and Saturn. But the fifth one, or rather, the first, because it's closest to the star, is different in a most horrible way. 55 Cancri E is so close to its sun that half the planet's surface is a literal ocean of molten lava. The other half is in eternal darkness because it never sees the sun. The planet is always turned to its star with one side. And between the scorching and the dark, there's the twilight zone, a thin strip of gloomy nothingness. HD 189733b, I won't say that again, is the only exoplanet in the orbit of its star. And at first glance, it looks quite pretty. Blue and white swirls making up wondrous patterns on the surface. But these pleasant colors actually come from hard silicate particles in the planet's atmosphere, which means it rains glass here. Plus, the glass falling from the sky travels horizontally at hypersonic speeds, shredding everything in its path. Kepler 70 is a hot blue dwarf star that exploded into a red giant some 18 million years ago. At the time, it was orbited by at least two planets, the closer of which was a Jupiter-like gas giant. Its name was Kepler 70b, and it still exists. But the overgrown star consumed it and transformed it into a blazing hot rocky world. Right now, it's one of the hottest planets ever discovered. Its temperature is higher than the surface of our sun. It was lucky to survive spending time inside the star, but it's evaporating now. And will probably be no more in the near future. If the Sun was the size of a front door, our planet would be the size of a nickel. In other words, the Sun could fit more than one million Earths. Moon rocks have a super slow erosion rate. That's why the Apollo astronauts' footprints left on the Moon are likely to stay there for 10 to 100 million years. Another one of Saturn's moons, Iapetus, has unique two-tone coloring. The difference between the satellite's two hemispheres is impressive. One of them is light and the other is eerily dark. Scientists haven't figured out this mystery just yet. All the planets of the solar system would fit between Earth and the Moon with some space left. Yes, there's lots of space in space. 
Saturn isn't the only planet that has rings. Gas giants Uranus, Neptune, and Jupiter have rings of their own, but they're thin and almost impossible to see. NASA can convert plasma waves, radio waves, and magnetic fields into audio tracks and listen to what's happening in space. They record all kinds of intriguing sounds, from beeps to ambulance-like howls. At the same time, space itself is an eerily silent place. There are some sound waves and vibrations, but people can't perceive them. On Earth, people are used to a beautiful sunset that's painted in hues of orange, red, and yellow. On Mars, however, the normally pinkish-red sky turns blue as the sun goes down under the horizon. It's because Mars is much further away from the sun than Earth, making the sunlight less intense. The fine dust in the Martian atmosphere absorbs the blue light and gets rid of the warmer colors that you typically see on Earth. Whether it's blue or yellow, both sunsets look spectacular. Humans have been exploring space for over 60 years, and the effort has certainly paid off. All the planets in our solar system have now been explored, even the dwarf planets of Pluto and Ceres. Most of the exploration was done by NASA's Voyager program, which began in 1977. Voyager 1 and 2 collected information on the planets, their moons, and their unique system of rings and magnetic fields. These twin spacecraft continue to send data back to Earth, and Voyager 1 is currently in interstellar space. On Earth, sound waves make air molecules vibrate, which is why we're able to hear sound. Other planets and moons allow sound to travel through mediums like their atmospheres and oceans, too. In space, though, it's said that there is no sound, since there aren't any molecules to vibrate and deliver sound waves. However, not all researchers agree on this, given that space isn't just a desolate vacuum. In between the emptiness, there are clouds of gas and other stray particles. So, depending on where you are, sound waves can be possible. Discovered in 2017, KELT 9b is the hottest planet we know of. That's because KELT 9b orbits really close to its star, which is called KELT 9. This thing is way hotter and bigger than our Sun. Experts believe that the giant star might someday evaporate the entire planet with its intense heat. Kind of a sizzling solar sauna, wouldn't you say? You wouldn't? Okay. One moon day is equal to about 29 days on Earth. It takes that long for the Sun to cross the lunar sky. People always see the same side of the Moon. The Earth's gravitational field makes the Moon spin around its axis slower. That's why it takes the Moon the same time to rotate around its axis as to orbit around the Earth. It was only in 1959 that people could finally see the other side of the Moon, thanks to a photo taken by the Russian spacecraft Luna 3. The other side of the Moon is more mountainous than the one we see from Earth. It can be explained by the Earth's gravity, which made the crust on the visible side of the Moon thinner. Craters on the Moon were left by asteroids 4.1 to 3.8 billion years ago. They're still visible, only because geological changes on the Moon aren't as active as on Earth. The Moon's gravity is only one-sixth of that of Earth's. You would be able to walk a distance six times longer and carry a weight six times heavier there. Though it's easier to walk, it's more dangerous too. An astronaut's foot in a heavy spacesuit might sink into the Moon's ground. Long-distance jumps can be uncontrolled and dangerous as the Moon's surface is full of deep craters. Because of the low gravity, lunar dust consisting of tiny, hard, and very sharp particles and smelling of gunpowder is all over the Moon. It makes a mess, causes symptoms like hay fever, and gets into spacesuits, ruining them. It's not all bad, though, since at sunset and sunrise, the dust sort of dances. It floats above the Moon's surface because electromagnetic forces make the particles float up. The Moon does have a kind of atmosphere which is called an exosphere. It consists of helium, neon, and argon. It's 10 trillion times less dense than on Earth. <laughs>